Hi friends, good evening. So I am Yana Baba, Professor of Zoology, Axie.com online course. The private amnibida. So we have hierarchy in classification, we know that one, I mentioned already, there is no real progress in evolution I mentioned. So only more and more complex body designs have evolved. Though more and more complex body designs have evolved, the simpler ones, the organisms with the simpler body designs normally surviving. So if there is any progress means the simpler forms have been deleted and the complex forms have been actually allowed to survive. But again there is no such things happening. Even you have some of the organisms are in still in primitive stage today also. They are not being eliminated. That's why we can say there is no trend in progress of evolution. There is no trend in progress of evolution. Evolution is nothing but actually the origin of life and diversity of organisms. And there is no, actually the complexity is increasing from lower to higher animals. But even now some of the organisms having their primitive characters, characteristics are surviving in this world. So, that is why I say there is no progress in evolution. We will consider this one later under evolution. Now, let us pass on to the next higher group and the later. And now this is the first group where you have the true segmentation is seen. The true segmentation is C. So the animals are as you have triploblastic, bilaterally symmetrical. But from onwards, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echnodermata, and Chordata, all these animals have a true seal. Hence, these are all called the true silhouette animals. But under this true silhouette, what is seen already, we have two types like we see. So triploblastic, bilaterally symmetrical. Now, metamerically segmented. A word I am using metameric segment. So, what do you mean by metamerism? The linear division of the body. Suppose you are taking the earth wall, the body is divided into many segments, linear division of the body. And all the segments are alike. And each segment has a representative part of all the systems. We have a part of digestive, a part of respiratory, a part of circulatory, a part of respiratory. All the systems are being formed in these cases. So that linear division of the body into many segments and all the divisions, all the segments are alike and each segment has a representative part of all the systems and that condition is called metamerism. And each segment is called metamere. Each segment is called metamere. Each segment is called metamere. And I am using the word here the size of silhouette animals. And the two silhouette groups we have one is a cytosilomate, another one enterosilomate. This is based on the nature of the development of the silo. Generally, true silomate, in silomate. Once again, they are classified into cytosilomate and then enterosilomate. We have echnodermata and caudata coming under enterosilomata. And now, analyta arthropoda mollusca, they are coming under cytosilomata. This is based on the development of the silo the nature of the coelom. So the coelom is normally developed. The coelom is developed by the splitting of mesoderm. And that is why it is called cytosilomate animals, but true silomate. Now if you are considering the habit of these animals, the animals may be terrestrial or aquatic or free living or parasitic. For example, we have the earth of a free living, a parasitic form leech. One example for parasitic Analytic leech, a cattle leech. So there is a parasitic animal feeding on the blood of cattle or even human beings. So, and all these animals have developed a specific organ for doing different functions. So we can have organ system level of organization and like uh, the peripherals, the sponges. Now, I mentioned already the body is divided into many ring like segments or metamers, hence the name Analyta. So each segment is in the form of a ring and less in the form of a ring, also called metamere or annulus, hence the name annulida. So we have different types of locomotor structures. In some cases, for example, earthworm, we have a sigmoid shape, a bristle like structure. What is called the body CT? The locomotor structures in the form of body CT, as in the case of earth. Now in the case of some marine form, one marine bone, a bristle bone, a sand bone or a clam bone, 
for example, nails. In the case of nails, we have paraphobia, the pad appendages. Suppose you are taking the body, I am taking only one segment or two segments, my case. On either side, we have appendages are present. These are all the appendages. And these appendages are called, this is the main body, and this is the appendage. And such appendages are called parapodia. So parapodia are the locomotive structures of nares and marine bone. And nares and marine bone. Then in the case of leeches, which are the parasitic forms, they have a suckers. The suckers are being used for attachment, for first organ, by which they can able to move. So along with these three structures, these organisms also make use of the muscles for their movement. So in the case of round bone, what I mentioned, we have only one type of muscle, namely the longitudinal muscle. But in the case of analytics, we have muscles, circular, outer circular and inner longitudinal muscles in the body wall. So in both the muscles are being used for the movement of the animal. And of course, and also, in the body cavity, it is filled with a fluid, a silomic fluid. The silomic fluid of the animal found in the body cavity acting as a hydrostatic skeleton, acting as a hydrostatic skeleton, and that skeleton is also used for locomotion. So, along with the CT, parapodia, and suckers, the animals make use of the muscles along with the silomic fluid as hydrostatic skeleton for their movement. So, I mentioned body wall consists of the outer circular and inner longitudinal muscles. Then, what is the nature of the respiration? In most cases, respiration takes place mainly through the body wall, mainly through the skin, the moist skin. Respiration is possible only through the moist skin. For example, the case of earthworm, for example, the case of leech, they have moist skin. Now, in the case of some animals, for example, Arenicola, Ketarteris, Aphrodite, in these cases, the marine organisms, they have the gills for respiration. There is one question in the endless question paper regarding this with my skin of earthworm. Suppose if the skin of earthworm dries, the animal dies. What is it due to? When the skin of earthworm dries, the animal dies, what is it due to? This is not because of dehydration, etc. So, normally you know that what respiration is possible only through the aqueous medium. Now, as there is no water or moist condition present on the surface of the skin, there is no possibility of entering of oxygen into the body. It's all right. And also similarly, there is no exit of carbon dioxide from the silomic fluid or from the body as there is no watery layer, moist layer. That is why what will happen, carbon dioxide accumulates in the silomic fluid in the body of the organism. So that the acidity of the organism increases. The animal dies because of that condition and that is called aspiasis. The death of earthworm while the skin dries is because of aspiasis. It is also called asphyxia. It's also called asphyxia. So this is a question also came in the entrance examination. So even it happens in our case also. So the earthworm dry, suppose the earthworm skin dries, the animal dies, this is because of asphyxis, not because of any other reason. This process is nothing but the accumulation of carbon dioxide in the body, in the silomic fluid and that condition is called asphyxia or asphyxis. Then, so anyway respiration takes place through my skin or through the gills. Now this is the first group where you have developed the circulatory system. So we have a closed circulatory system, a specific well developed circulatory system for the first time in the animal kingdom in the case of Annelida. That is why it is called a closed type of circulatory system, closed type. So in contrast to this closed type, we also have open type of circulatory system. So human beings, we have closed type of circulatory system. In the case of just actually cockroaches or insects, we have open type. The difference between these two, in the case of closed type, the blood is contained in the blood vessel or the blood is flowing through the blood vessels. 
But in the case of pulp and type, there are no blood vessels. Simply the blood is contained in the body cavity. There are no blood vessels to just circulate the blood. The whole organ systems of the body both in the blood. That is called pulp. So, this is the first group developed a circulatory system which is a closed type. And that way the blood is red in color. But the blood is red in color, just like human blood. Because the blood contains a respiratory pigment, hemoglobin. In the case of earth, you can see. But there is one difference between the red blood of man and the red blood of earth. So in our case, the hemoglobin, the red pigment, the respiratory pigment is formed in the orbis. But in the case of earth, it is not found in the RBC because the RBC is absent. We have the cells only, that is chemocytes, and the pigment is dissolved in plasma, not contained in the RBC, but simply dissolved in plasma, and that is why it is also called erythrochrorin, simply called as erythrochrorin. The meaning for that one, it is simply dissolved in the plasma. Unlike human beings, where you have the hemoglobin contained in the RBC, but here it is simply dissolved in the plasma. And always we have exceptions in each category, you know that one where we are talking about a particular character. Now in the case of most of the in the case of most of the animals of animals, we have the blood is red in color. And I let you know just in the case of two animals. Sabella and Siphonculus. The Sabella is normally called as peacock bow and the Siphonculus is called as peanut bow. Peacock peanut bow. Now, in the case of these two animals, we have a green pigment what is called chlorochromorin. No hemoglobin in these two animals. We have a green pigment that is chlorochromorin and that is dissolved in plasma. So, earthworm contains red pigment in these two categories of animals, that is one is the cock bone, another one be nut bone. In these two cases, we have a green pigment, what is called chlorochlorine, that is also dissolved in the plasma, not contained in any cells. So, anyway, I mentioned all this is the first group that developed the blood vascular system first time. Now, also the nervous system, we have the nervous system somewhat well developed when compared to the round worms or the flat worms. There you have a primitive type of nervous system. Though now five is present, we have the brain is not fully developed. But in this case, we have developed a brain, a so-called brain we can say, not actually a normal brain as in the case of human being. And that normal brain here is nothing but a collection of nerve cells. We use the word what is called ganglia. Ganglia for the brain. So based on the location where normally there is ganglia form. So normally the brain is composed of a pair of ganglia, a collection of nerve cells only. The connective tissue, namely what is called the neuroglial cells are absent. And here the brain is located just about the pharynx. This is called suprapharyngeal ganglia. And also just below the pharynx on the ventral side, we have another set of ganglia that is called sub of subpharyngeal ganglia and both being connected by means of a nerve ring. So we did not worry about the actually the structural aspect. Simply we can see there is a brain, what is called suprapharyngeal ganglia, like this. Suppose this is the brain formed above the pharynx. And below the pharynx, once again, we have a pair of ganglia. This is supra, this is what is called sub pharyngeal ganglia. And around the pharynx, there is a rib. These two are connected. Uh, that is why I mentioned what is called a nerve ring. This is what is called circumpharyngeal connective. Circumpharyngeal connective, connecting the two ganglionic muscles. And from this one, there arises a double ventral nerve cord running through the body. And where you have in each segment, we have segmental ganglia. This is the nervous system, general nervous system in the case of analytics. A brain formed of two ganglia, and then below it, that is below the pharynx, we have a set of ganglia, and both are interconnected by means of circumpharyngeal connective, that is why I mentioned the word nerve ring, and from that one arises a pair of ventral nerve cord, that is one of the characteristics of invertebrates, solid, and in each segment, we have segmental 
ganglia. Then, so what are the other characteristics regarding the reproduction? In some cases, the sexes are separate. That is what, what we can say, dioecious condition. In some cases, sexes are separate, dioecious condition. In some cases, sexes are united. That is what is called bisexual. Hermaphrodites, bisexual, hermaphrodites, are monoecious. All words are the same meaning. Bisexual, hermaphrodites, and monoecious. And in some cases, sexes are separate. For example, in the case of earthworm and leech, sexes are united. Bisexual or hermaphrodite. In the case of males or polygodies, we have the sexes are separate. There is a separate male individual and separate female individual. So. The main method of reproduction is sexual mode of reproduction. And where does fertilization occur? Either inside the body or outside the body. So in all the cases of animals of animals, we have fertilization that is external, happening outside the body in water. But in the case of Hirudinians, Hirudinia, one class Hirudinians, then there you have the leeches, the example where you have the fertilization is internal. So earthworm, male, sorry, earthworm and also in the case of actually other animals, male is polygodies, we have fertilization occurs outside the body. But in the case of Hirudinians, Hirudinia, a class which includes the leeches, where you have the fertilization inside the body. The animal is laying eggs after internal fertilization. Now, the development is direct normally in the case of bisexual forms or hermaphrodite forms. The development is direct in the case of monoecious forms or bisexual forms. Say an example of a leeches and earthworm. But in the case of aquatic forms like knees, where sexes are separate, sexes are separate, it is an example for dioecious form where you have the development is indirect. So in dioecious forms, where sexes are separate, the development is indirect. That means there is a larval stage. The most important larva that happens to occur in the case of ladies and other animals which show dioecious condition, the trochophore larva. The trochophore larva. Then, so there is a the nature of development, larval stages in the case of uh, that is what is called dioecious forms. Then, this group includes actually the following classes. I will give only a few examples as per examination point of view. Class 1 polychaete. So these are all the animals having bundle of CT just found in the parapodia. Bundle of CT found in the parapodia. That is why the name is given polychaete. Example, nails. It is commonly known as a sand bone or clam bone or drizzle bone. Sand bone, clam bone, or bristle bone. The common name for this name is sand bone, clam bone, or bristle bone. Then aphrodite. This is the question we came many times in the question paper. Aphrodite. The animal is looking like a mouse having parapodia on either side. Hence the name sea mouse, which one of the following is not a mammal, and this is aphrodite. It is also called as sea, actually, potato bone. Another name for this one, potato bone. The sea mouse, the aphrodite is called sea mouse and also called potato bone. Then the paddle bone, ketoptinus. The paddle bone, ketoptinus. The arenicola, another polychaete, commonly known as the lung bone. All our examination point of view, important ones. So aphrodite came many times in the question paper. So aphrodite, sea mouse, also called potato bone. Now the name is called the sand worm, the bristle worm or the clam worm. So this is one class having parapodia with many CT, hence the name. So Aphrodite, the name of the animal. Aphrodite, the name of the animal. So what is the meaning of Aphrodite means the name of the animal. The animal is having the structure like this. So having many parapodia and CT. In movement, the animal is looking like a mouse. Hence, it is called what is known as actually the sea mouse. 
Okay, the Aphrodite is the name of the animal, the biological name Aphrodite, the scientific name. Okay, now let's pass on to the next one. So, class number two, Polygrocheta, you know that one, just Antifretima posma, the common example, the earthworm, and here we have only the body CT. The animals are Elma products having body CT for movement, Fretima posma. Then, class Hirudinea, the third one. So, one example we have Hirudinea. The class is named so because the animal saliva contains one substance, what is called Hirudin. A substance, what is called Hirudin. And that substance is nothing but an anticoagulant. While sucking the blood continuously, in order to keep the blood in fluid state, the leech secretes saliva which contains this hirudin which makes the blood not to be clotted. So that the animal sucks the blood continuously without any obstruction. So that is why the name is given, hirudinia, the animal name and hirudinia, the name of the class. So hirudin, the anticoagulant found in the saliva, it is a protein. Now, unlike the other animals where you have the segments are not actually uh, constant, in the case of leech, the number of segments is always constant. The segments definite, that is 33. The number of segments, 33. And the locomotive structures, they have the suckers, anterior sucker and posterior sucker. Now, what is the nature of feeding? So, we have different types of feeding. Different types of feeding and different types of what is called nutrition, autotropic, heterotropic, and the heterotropic. One type of feeding, what is called sanguivorous mode of feeding. The blood eaters are called sanguivores, just like carnivore, herbivore, omnivores. Here, leeches are sanguivores. The mode of feeding is called sanguivores mode of feeding because they are all the blood eaters. Blood sucking animals are the blood eaters. Hence, they are called sanguivores in contrast to the herbivores, carnivores, etc. Now, I mentioned the saliva contains an anticoagulant substance called hirudin. This is also very important. Now, they have a hemocelic system. The meaning for that one, the silomic cavity filled with the silomic fluid along with the interconnection of the circulatory system. It is rather. So, hemocelic system is found only in the case of leeches. Then, in that system, we have a peculiar tissue, what is called the botryoidal tissue. And that is concerned with excretion. That is concerned with excretion. Now the last one, a primitive group, what is called archaeanalyta, the external polygonius. Yes? The animal doesn't show the analytic characteristics. For example, the primitive animals without segmentation, then we have suckers and parapodia. There is no external segmentation and internal segmentation. There are no suckers, there are no parapodia. But now this class has been placed at a different final a sub because they have primitive characters. So these characters are not considered as a primitive characters according to the new concept and these are all considered as degenerative characters for their burrowing mode of life. So now this class has been included under a separate phylum or candle leader. So anyway just I conclude with this one because of one of time. So if you are more interested just let me ask any questions. So I will just give the answers as what you wish. Already I gave the answers for some of the questions. Okay. So I will continue with this one later in the next class. Thank you. For